for those who are wondering, today's YouTuber I'm watching is Kit Kat's Can Read. You should check her out. I've been watching her for fairly, like, a couple of years now, I think. And uh, she's fantastic, and she doesn't get the love and support that she should do. So go and subscribe to Kit Kat's Can Read and tell her I sent you. Excellent. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to do the first time I read a book tag. So this was a tag that was originally created by Madman Reads and Rocks, who is a good friend of mine here on the booktubes. And this is interesting because it is a tag, but there are no questions. So basically, the idea is, is you just talk about the first time you read a book and whatever that means to you. So I haven't actually prepared any notes or anything. I haven't even prepared who I'm going to tag. But I have actually prepared a book. I've come with a book called Dinosaur Adventure by uh, Tom Mosey. So basically the problem that we have is that I guess this is the same problem that most people have is that I don't know what the first time I read a book was. I mean I would have been three or something. I don't know whenever I was learning to read. I know before I went to primary school I could already read and then they started teaching us to read and it bored me. <laughs> but um yeah, I mean, I used to read in the back of cars and everything. I used to love, I just used to love reading, basically. And this book here, though, is probably one of the earlier ones. And I thought it was an interesting one to highlight because it's actually one of those books that is customized to be about, you know, to be about whoever, whoever it's about. So, so this is actually about uh, Dane Bygrave, which is, so I changed my surname. Fun fact, you guys probably don't know that. So, yeah, my, um. Oh, my, my name was Dane Bygrave, and then basically in the early days of the internet and whatnot, all my usernames were Dane Cobain, and people started calling me Dane Cobain, it was what I was known as, computer beeped, it then became my pen name as well, so everyone called me and knew me as Dane Cobain, so that's that's why I changed my name. So this, this predates that obviously, it's actually a gift from my grandparents, and I thought what might be nice would be to actually read through it, because then I guess it tells you a bit about bit about my life. Never thought I'd be reading this particular book on my booktube channel, but why not? So, so the star of this book is Dane Bygrave, with love from Grandma and Grandad, 1992. Which would mean I would have been, uh, well I was born in 89, so I would have turned three. Oh yeah, here we go, it is. It must have been, it must be after June of 92. <laughs> Alright, Dane Bygrave, age three, lives in Dostal. One day, he decided he would like to see a real live dinosaur. There are no dinosaurs left in the world, Emily and Chris told him. So that's my half-brother and half-sister, who were both like 10 years older than me, so they would have been like 14 when I was three. Dane was very sad to hear that he could not see a real dinosaur. He spent the rest of the day thinking about it. He and his friends played with toy dinosaurs and even watched a dinosaur movie on television. But Dane still wanted to see a real dinosaur. That does sound like the three-year-old me. That night, when Dane fell asleep, his mind was still on dinosaurs. Suddenly, he found himself alone in a large forest. There were very few trees, and they were unlike any he had ever seen. Dane listened, but could hear nothing. Look at those trees. They're unlike anything I've ever seen. If only Emily and Chris were here with me, thought Dane. At that moment, he heard a noise. He turned around, and there was a brontosaurus. That's how you pronounce it, look. Yeah, there we go. The large animal was sobbing loudly, splashing buckets of huge tears all over the ground. Dane blinked his eyes in disbelief at the size of the animal. Why has it got an exclamation mark? Dane blinked his eyes in disbelief at the size of the animal! The brontosaurus spoke. Please help me. I think that should be the brontosaurus said, please help me, but whatever. What's the matter, asked Dane. Well, I am always being bullied by the Triceratops. Just because I do not like to fight. Pacifist dinosaurs, man. Dane felt sorry for the brontosaurus. She seemed friendly and Dane wanted to help her. Don't cry, pleaded Dane. We'll think of something. Then he decided to introduce himself. I am Dane, he said. I am Nessie, sniffed the brontosaurus as she blew her nose on a large flowered tissue. Well, tell me your problem, said Dane, and maybe we can figure out what to do. Because I was a wise three-year-old and accustomed to solving problems for massive reptiles. 
I am a peace-loving Brontosaurus, and I'd like to be friends with everyone, but the Triceratops are making it hard for me. Dane and Nessie sat down to think of a plan to help her. Nessie smiled, stretched out on the grass, and gazed up at the dark sky. I know, Dane exclaimed. Do you have any friends who could help us? Oh yes, replied Nessie. Snapper and Flapper, the Pterodactyl twins will help. Pterodactyls fly, you know. So they set out to find Snapper and Flapper. If you will get on my back, I will give you a ride, said Nessie. Off she went with Dane holding on tightly. Emily and Chris would like this bumpy ride, thought Dane. Oh yeah, because that's not an unsubtle way to crowbar back in those personalization bits again. It's actually not that personalized, really. They've just, you know, done a find and replace on the names. They continued on across the desert, then all the way up to the top of a mountain. They stopped near a nest which was perched on a high ledge. There in the nest were two bird-like creatures. <laughs> Snapper, called Nessie. I have brought a nice talking insect to meet you. The pterodactyl swooped down to get a closer look. Can I eat it? He asked hungrily. I don't, you can't ask things hungrily. That doesn't make sense. No, you cannot, yelled Dane. I am not a bug. I am a person and I came to help Nessie. I did not come to be your dinner, you bellend. I might have ad-libbed that last little bit there, you know. Snapper realised that he had better forget about his stomach for now. Flapper joined Snapper and they sat down with Dane and Nessie. They listened politely as Dane explained his plan to teach the Triceratops a lesson. First of all, said Dane, the Triceratops... Oh, apparently there is some advanced um, dialogue in this book that I just cannot wrap my tongue around here. First of all, said Dane, the Triceratops are full of mischief, but they have not really meant Nessie any harm. What we must do is scare them a little. Then they will leave Nessie alone. They decided to gather some large stones and pile them on both sides of a deep canyon. When the Triceratops entered the canyon, the stones were pushed off to frighten them. The falling rocks scared the Triceratops so much that they ran away. They promised Dane that they would never bully anyone again. Oh no, I've just seen the end and it's done, it's done the cliche awful thing. At that moment, Dane woke up, ending his dream and his great adventure. Oh. He sat up in his bed thinking he must tell Emily and Chris about his dinosaur friends. He was sure he would meet them again soon, in another dream, in another adventure. I mean, it's quite sweet really, isn't it? It's just, it's also fairly badly written. I feel like I could do a better job of this and I don't know why people aren't hiring me to ghostwrite, you know, these stories. But yeah, so, so this is, the f one of the first books anyway that I read because obviously I was in it so I used to enjoy reading it because I knew I was in it I'm sure there are other books that I probably read before this maybe the very hungry caterpillar but this is this is what came to mind when when uh, when when uh, Ryan tagged me in in his video of to talk about the first time I read a book so this is it I hope you enjoyed this story time <laughs> and um yeah on that note, I'm going to tag three people to also talk about the first time that they read a book. Now, I should point out as well, because there is there is a uh, first adult book tag going around as well. So, this, this is literally the first time you read any book, not necessarily an adult book, which I think is cool. And also, I do really like the fact that there are no questions, so you can just ramble on and structure this how you want. I mean, I basically just read a book to you guys, and uh, tag done, I guess. I'm going to tag three people to do this though, so I am going to tag, I'm literally, I'm looking here at the three most recent people who've commented on my videos because it's pretty, pretty convenient way to make sure that I'm tagging a nice diverse selection of people as well. So I'm going to tag Night Fear, especially because she said um, she wanted to do more tags. I'm going to tag Richardson Reads. The third person I'm going to tag is Melissa and Barnsey Reed. So you guys, the three of you, please do take the first time I read a book tag. And uh, yeah, that'd be cool. And in the meantime, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you haven't already. And I will see you soon for more bookish videos. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.